Because of politics, you kill each other. Because of politics, you fight with each other. You hate each other. This is the politics of Shaitan. His duty is to create hatred among us so that we fight with each other. Islam is a way of life. It is very wrong for Muslim to say that Islam and politics cannot mix, cannot be together because Islam is a way of life. Without Islam, there is no clean politics. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Zakallah khair. We will begin answering these questions on the topic of Islam and politics. And to do so with the time we have, we would like everyone to follow these guidelines for the questions and answers. Questions asked should be on the topic. That's number one. Number two, questions not relevant to the topic, including any general questions on the religion, will not be allowed. Kindly state your question briefly and to the point. Please, no statements. Only one question at a time may be asked. For your second question, you will have to go to the back of the line and wait your second chance to speak. Non-Muslims, both male and female, will be given preference to ask questions. If you need to get to the microphone, please make sure you get to a volunteer and they will assist you. There are three mics which we have arranged around the auditorium. The first one is here, the second in the back for the males, and one for the sisters in the front. If you don't want to use the microphone, maybe you're a little shy, you may write your question and get it to any one of the volunteers, but questions which are written will be given second preference. Kindly state your name and your profession before you start your question, and remember, please have your questions on the topic of Islam and politics. We'll take a question from the sister side. Sister, please state your name and profession. Assalamu alaikum, brother. I'm Alia Khan, and I'm a student of psychology. Wa alaikum salam. Brother, what I want to ask is, can a Muslim woman enter politics? And if not, what is her role in politics? Uh, before I answer, I would like to call if the, my double is here, uh, the son Sa'ad Nadim Siddiqui. Where is Sa'ad Nadim Siddiqui? Yeah, he is walking up here now. Can you please come up and... <laughs> Siddiqui, sit there. This is my double. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless this son. We hope to have children like them, yeah, who are able to act like all the da'i, the scholar. We have a beautiful uh, performance last night, and he is representing me. So that's why I want all of you to know who is Sa'ad Nadim Siddiqui. You're going to stay there, okay? If I cannot answer, you must help me. Can a Muslim woman enter politics? When there's no man, then you can be, enter politics. But now there's still a lot of men, so leave it to the men. But you are always, yeah, all woman is always a born politician. Yeah, you are a politician, you don't have to enter into any politics anymore. You start from home, you are the Ministry of Home Affairs. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to worry about that. You take care of the family. Take care of the future generation because the future generation is going to be the future leader. Okay, sis? Alhamdulillah. Thank you. So what is happening outside, don't let the men corrupt you. Don't let the men corrupt you, sister. You better stay put, be happy with what you are. Allah has put you in a very important post. You are the Ministry of Home Affairs. You know that no politician outside can be a successful politician without the woman behind them. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help you, sis, inshallah. Yeah? Just pray for the man politician. When there is no man, then we have no choice. The woman got to come out. Yeah? Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. At the moment, in the most of the Muslim countries, there are kings and dictators where the freedom of an individual is completely denied. And as per the history, you know what the kings and dictators does. Yeah. 
do the Muslims still have to follow those kings and declare that? Uh, what should we do? What should we do? Allahu Akbar Allah. It's a very critical question. We have kings. Allah know this is going to happen. The Prophet have foreseen this. That's why the Prophet said, Allah in the day of judgment will call all the kings. He will say, Ana al Malik, Aina Mulukular. I am the king. The only king belong to this kinghood belong to Allah, do not belong to us. But now human want to call themselves king. And they, when they become king, they are above law. And a lot of Muslim leaders today are dictatorship. What should we do? Our duty as a Muslim, number one, is to try to reach him in any way you can. If you have a first phone number or write a letter, anything, if you can't do it, at least, like what I said earlier, you pray for him. Just pray for him first. Of course, we cannot just follow them blindly. Whatever the Muslim leader wants us to do, it is against the Sharia, we cannot obey them. Because the Prophet said, La ta'atul makhluk fi ma'asyatillah. We cannot obey another human in doing something against Allah. But if they are not doing something against Allah, they have their own weaknesses. And whatever they command you that do not go against the Sharia, you can still be with them. You can still obey them as long as what they want you to do do not go against Allah and the Prophet. I know what is happening to the Muslim country today. We may protest, we may fight for it, one changes, but we need to have a lot of patience, brother. We do not know the leader that we want to replace, whether he is a better leader or not. Sometimes we think he is better. Every time we hope that the coming leader is a better leader, but after that, sometime he also is corrupted. So what we must have, Islam taught us or teach us to be patient and do whatever you can yeah, to be a good citizen. And then show them that you are a better person. Maybe Allah will appoint us one day. Nothing is impossible. But do not corrupt the people. Do not try to influence other people to go against a Muslim leader. I know nobody is perfect, neither we are perfect. Always in our lifetime, we are, it's easy for us to judge a person. But it's not easy when we are there. So we ask Allah to help them with our patience. We hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open their heart and become a better leader. And we hope the king is not above law because Allah is going to deal with them separately in the day of judgment. We hope they become a good leader. If they want to call themselves king, be a good king. It's okay, inshallah. No. We'll take a question from the gentleman in the rear, please. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Asif and I'm in business. Well, over the last few days, uh, we have heard in any one of your talks, you have mentioned that all Muslims should love peace, be loving, forgiving, and etc. And but doesn't Quran and Islam say about uh, uh, revenge and uh, agitations and protests? What do you have to say about it? In Islam, always promote peace. The first thing that Islam wants us to do to have peace. Now, if you cannot, yeah, cannot have peace, yeah, if you cannot. I mean, if you fight, you ask for peace and peace does not come to you. You just got to have a lot of patience. If you go back to the history of Islam, even in a time of the Prophet, they got to migrate. If they have to migrate, they have to migrate. If they are not safe to stay in this environment because people don't respect their right anymore. At that, that point of time, Allah want the Muslim to migrate to a safer area. Not to fight with them. Because your duty is to call them to be good, to be just. But if they fail to be a good leader, and you know you've been oppressed, you got to make a migration. You see what the Prophet is showing us? He himself, if Allah give him miracle, he can just ask Allah, Oh Allah, destroy all these people. He didn't do that. He can ask Allah. You remember the history when the Prophet went to Ta'if? After the death of his uncle, Abu Talib, and the death of his beloved wife, Khatija, to find... Uh, to try to get support uh, from his family in Ta'if. The people in Ta'if do not welcome him. They throw stone at him. They injured him. The angel who is taking care of these two mountains came to the Prophet and asked him permission for the angel 
to destroy the whole inhabitants of Taif. But the Prophet said, Allahu Akbar walillahi alham. Inni lam ub'as la'anan walakinni bu'istu da'iyan wa rahmah. Allahumma di qawmi fa'innahum la ya'lamun. I am not stand to bring destruction. When people are not happy with me, people don't accept me, I just ask Allah, destroy them. Replace them with a better nation. No. But he said, I am being sent by Allah as a savior, as a caller, to bring mercy to mankind. They go against me because they do not know who am I. Oh Allah, give guidance to them. With his patience, before he passed away, the whole Ta'if become Muslim. Because of the prayer and the prophet and the patience. So brother, that would be the best way. If you are trying to promote peace, people are not happy with it. Like the Prophet, he promote peace for you to respect each other, honor each other. People are not happy. But at last he will ask Allah for help. He know at the end of the day, Almighty Allah, the all-powerful, he only one can change. Yeah? We cannot change everything. So we got to have a lot of patience. You understand that brother? I, I believe that you also have a lot of patience. And don't forget to pray for each other. Whoever that you are not happy with, you cannot help him to change. Ask Allah to open his heart and make him change. Inshallah. At the end of the day, everybody will be happy. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Yusuf Estes, and you're watching Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Saturday to Thursday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Peace TV presents over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world addressing a sea of spellbound spectators over 30 world-renowned orators on Islam with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. One and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way. It's the simple way. Remind each other. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people for good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, the glorious Quran. The glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in peacemakers, Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum. We'll go to the sister side. Sister, could you please state your name and profession? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, firstly, I take this opportunity to say that we all love you. Amen, amen. For the sake of Allah. And now my question is, um, it goes like this. Whenever you see anything wrong, you should stop it with your hands. If you can't, do that with your mouth. And if not, you at least curse it in your heart. 
and that is the lowest level of Iman. How can we apply this uh, same to the corrupt politicians? Should we follow this order or otherwise? Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. The Prophet sallallahu did remind us, Man ra'a minkum al-munkar fal yugayru bi yadi wa ilam tastati fa bi lisani wa ilam tastati fa bi qalbi. The Prophet is telling us that if any one of you is confronted with something that is haram, something that is bad, not only bad for you, but bad for the nation, then you should try your level best. If you have the authority, you use your power, you use your hand. If you don't have the authority, at least you speak out. Don't keep quiet. If that also is not possible, then at least deep in your heart, you hate what they are doing, you go against it. But in the same time, do not just hate and don't do anything. At least you pray again at the end of the day, pray. The Prophet don't like what the people who have been... Um, who, what the mushrikeen yeah, have done to his follower but he still keep on praying for Allah's help everybody cannot say that I totally have no authority if you are a mother you must ha know that you have authority in your house you have the right to stop any form of haram thing entering the house even if your husband is bringing something haram you have the right to stop it because Allah said, "Wal mu'minun wal mu'minat ba'duhum awliya uba ya'muruna bil ma'ru yanhauna 'anil munkar." The Muslim believer, male and female, husband and wife, they are ba'duhum awliya uba. They are protector, they are helper, they complement each other. The same thing if you want to do something wrong in the house, the husband have the right to stop you. Your children, if they want to bring something haram back home, you have the right to stop them. That is your right. That is your responsibility. You cannot say, what can I do? You want a policeman to come to the house and do that for you? You must have certain authority, certain dignity. I am the mother. The children must know who you are. And you must show that you must exercise your authority in your house. That is your duty, sister. But if you can't like your husband maybe you're weak you cannot stop him but at least you talk to him talk to him reason up to him if you're so naive you know that anything you say at home you'll get a slap you have a you're so it so happened you got a man who do not love you why you married a person who you don't love because it's been planned like that it's not your choice is a family who decide. That means the family is not being just to you. The family is not being fair to you. They should be very selective. Do not just pass their daughter to any man. Because the daughter is an amana. You cannot just give your daughter to just any man who have no iman and they are going to destroy your children. So if you have certain authority, you must do that. If you can't do it, the least that you can do is with your heart, yes. But at least you also pray, Oh Allah, help me to strengthen my iman and also increase my patience to face this trial. And then, Oh Allah, open the heart of this wrongdoer. You try your level best, brother and sister. You do not know how powerful your dua is sometimes. We forget the power of dua. We forget that. And the Prophet reminds us, Da'watul aqili aqifil ghib la turat The Prophet said, a prayer from a fellow Muslim brother to another Muslim brother or sister without they knowing that we are praying for them, without they ask us to pray for them, come from the sincere heart, will not be rejected by Allah. So don't forget to pray for them. Do I answer your question correctly, sister? Do I answer the, the question correctly, please? Yes, sir. Thank you Zakallah. very much. Zakallah khair. And one again a, a bit. The sister, please, when you want to do something amal ma'ruf nahi munkar, do it together in a team with the jama'ah. The sisters will always get close to each other. You must always remember that all of you is like a family. If one of the sisters is having problems, don't just leave it to her. And parent, please, parent, you must remember, your daughter is still your daughter. You must give them protection. When they are oppressed by their husband, if their husband commits zulm on them, you have all the right to come in and interfere in the family problem. Please remember, Father. 
Don't think that, oh, now I've given my daughter to the, to the, to the man to marry her. Now I have no responsibility. You still have a responsibility. If your daughter is being oppressed, is being beaten by the husband, go and give a helping hand. Help the man. He has no right to do that. If the man still stubborn, take your daughter back. Free one I have seen with my own eye. You don't allow the sister to go to the mosque and pray. Now, Zubillah, don't do that anymore. The Prophet forbid you to do that. Any woman who wants to come to the house of worship to perform prayer, allow them. Don't allow your tradition to overrule the religion. Number one. Number two, when you're performing Salatul Janazah, you know Salatul Janazah? Brother, do you know what is Salatul Janazah? I don't hear the brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is Salatul Janazah? Funeral prayer. Sister, when somebody passes away in your community, do you pay the, them a visit? Do you pay them a visit, sister? When somebody passes away in your community, do you pay them a visit? Yes. What do you do after paying them a visit? What do you do? Do you participate in performing the Salatul Janazah? You forget your responsibility. Hakul Muslim ala Muslim situn. There are six responsibility among fellow Muslim. One of it, if somebody pass away, you should at least perform a prayer for them. And the Prophet have said, whoever perform one salat for the janazah, he get one qirat. One qirat is a reward of the mouth of Uhud in Medina. The Prophet never said that women cannot perform salat al janazah. The more people who perform salat al janazah for the disease, yeah, you will be reward and the disease also will be reward by Allah. We will be very blessed if a lot of Muslims come to our funeral and then they perform prayer on us. But most of the time, the man is the one who engaged in the Salat al Janazah. But you never, never encourage the woman to do Salat al Janazah. Have you been performing Salat al Janazah, sister? Have you been performing Salat al Janazah, sister? I don't hear you. Say it again. No, you see? You hear it, brother? They don't even know how to perform Salat al Janazah because we have been very unjust to them. We stopped them from participating. Yeah, in the Salatul Janazah. As though as they have no right to perform Salatul Janazah. May the Prophet encourage every Muslim to perform Salatul Janazah. May Allah give you your freedom, sis. May Allah strengthen your iman. Don't forget your right. And may your husband become your protector. Insha'Allah. Faddam. The gentleman in the front. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum My salam name is Rafa Allah. Ahmad. And I'm running a business in Mumbai. I want to ask you, sir, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has sallam. said that my ummah will divide it into 73 groups and only one group is, will go in Jannah. I want to ask you that 72 groups who will go in Jahannam, they will remain, live there or they will go in Jannah after the punishment? Jazakallahu khair. Now we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did say, Kullu ummati yadkhuloon, kullu ummati yadkhulul jannah, illa man aba. فقال ومن يأبى يا رسول الله فقال من أطاعني دخل الجنة ومن أصاني فقد أبى. The Prophet said all my ummah will enter paradise. All my ummah. But the hadith that you are talking about, the Prophet said my ummah will be divided to seventy three, seventy three more than the Yahud and the Nasara. And then the Prophet said only one will enter paradise. The first hadith, he said, all my ummah will enter. Now this hadith said, 73 groups, 72 will go to hell, one go to Jannah. And then the companion, they asked the Prophet. They want to make sure where they stand. Which group that will go to Jannah? The Prophet said, Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi, whoever follow my way and the way of my companions, not the way of anybody. My way and the way of my companion because they are the best generation. Karunas Karni, the Prophet said, the best generation is the generation in the time of the Prophet. Then the second generation and the third generation. We are, do not know which, which, maybe when the 50 or 60 generation now. So we are not under the category. Now, coming back to your question, 
when you become a Muslim, you may commit sin. You may follow the wrong way. Maybe because you are ignorant, may Allah forgive you. Maybe because of your stubbornness, may Allah open your heart. But if you do not commit shirk, then the Prophet said, yes. After you commit your sin, you go to Jahannam, then Allah will forgive you and He will put you into paradise. Yes, the Prophet said, why? Because you have Iman. That is the only thing that saves us from hell fire, is our Iman. The Prophet said, La tadkhuluna al jannah hatta tu'minu. None of us can enter paradise that belongs to Allah until He believes. Wala tu'minu hatta tahabu. None of us can be a true believer until you love each other. That's why I want you to love each other, brother and sister. Yeah, I want you to say to your friend, I love you, I love you. Can you say it again, brother and sister? I love you. I love you. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Jazakallah khair for your patience. May Allah bless us. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Fellow brother and sister, on the behalf of our, me and my, my wife, we would like to thank all the, especially the organizing committee of this conference. And we will hope that all of you don't forget. Don't forget to join hand to hand and make sure that Peace TV and IRF will grow. We'll be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't forget to pray for us. We need also your prayer.